Have you ever thought about turning Excel into a complete graphic design application? Perhaps not, but today we're going to do just that. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and this week we're going to do the Restaurant Menu Designer. I'm going to show you how to create this incredible menu designer complete with pictures, items, graphics, thumbnail pages. We're going to be able to create these menus live in front of you, multiple pages, unlimited menus, and a whole lot more. I'm going to show you every step. I cannot wait. So let's get started. All right, welcome to this week's training. Thank you so much for joining us. I've got a really incredible training, the Restaurant Menu Designer. We're gonna turn Excel into a graphic design program. We're gonna be able to add pictures. We're gonna be able to add unlimited items, whatever kind of food items you want, along with their pictures. We're gonna be able to add graphics, circles, squares, you name it, text boxes. And we're gonna have unlimited thumbnail pages so that we can simply create a menu and then click on the thumbnails to show that particular page. We're gonna have page navigation. So we're going to be doing all of that navigating. We'll be able to add new pages and we're going to do it all today. I'm going to show you every step that I did to create this application, all the code, all the graphics, and everything I'm going to show you. So I hope you'll stay tuned and watch the entire training because I've got so many goodies to show you. If you do like these trainings, all I ask is just a few things. If you could, of course, click on the subscription bell and the notification icon there. I want to make sure that you get these trainings each and every time that I create them. And the best way to do that is to get subscribed. Also, don't forget to like this video if it's something that you like and you want me to create more of them. Comment below. I respond to each and every one of those comments. That will really help help the algorithms and let you know when I create more of these videos. All right, great. We're going to get started right away. I just want to tell you, I got a brand new course out. I think it's something that you are really going to love. The Freelancers Academy Masterclass. Now, this masterclass is an incredible. It's not only going to teach you how to become a successful freelancer, but we're going to do it in a nine-phase program. Now, this particular course isn't about Excel. It is about everything else all the marketing, all of the relationships that you can develop, all the social media and how you can create a successful freelancing career to reach your financial freedom. That's a brand new course, a 13 hour masterclass. I'll include the link down below. I hope you'll pick that up. I do want to help you reach your dreams and this course is a great way to get started. All right, so let's get started on this training. What we'll do is we'll do a run view of the application. We'll go over everything, all the sheets, and then we'll get into some of the code and seeing how we did that. So basically, what do we have here? Well, we have a menu Designer. I've got a list of menus so we can create unlimited menus here on the left part. So we notice we've got Harry's Burgers here. Harry's has got one page to his menu. Now we've got Fred, Fred's, Fredder's Pizza here. Fred's got to make an appearance here. So he's got different wood fired pizza oven. He's got three pages. Now it says page one of three. So we can move to different pages and we can see that we've got pasta on the second page and we've also got a navigation on the third page. We've got salads. We can also see here inside the pages, we can also click on the these thumbnails here to load the page itself. So we've got thumbnails that are automatically created and we're going to use them as links to get to the pages. So that's another way to do it. We've got graphics. If we want to add a particular graphic to it, all we need to do is just click on the plus. It's going to add that graphic here. We can then make any change that we want. We can fill it. We can change the border. We can put text in it. That graphic's going to be saved. If I save that menu, it's going to be saved on the page. If we take a look inside, clicking OK, we take a look at the pages, we see that that graphic here is now inside the thumbnail. If I want to remove that graphic, I can remove it. Saving it, it's going to save it. That's all we need to do pretty much as far as how to change and navigate through those. So what about the graphics? So we've got a list of graphics here. We can add text boxes, parallelograms, lines, and so on and so forth. Now I've got items. Now I've got a library of pictures, and they're all separated by categories. So we've got pizza, salads, pasta, main dishes, desserts, and, and you know, and burgers, okay? So let's say I want to add, let's say maybe another pizza at the bottom here. So what I would do is I simply click on pizza here, and we've got several, maybe you want a pepperoni ham. I'm gonna click this little plus here. What that's going to do is gonna add the pizza. You can't really see it's in a black font right now, but it's if I click on the individual items, those are the three items, the name, 
the description and the price so you can't see them but as soon as i change that font to white you're going to be able to see it it's just default because i've got it using a default and now what i can do is just hold the control down and i can drag that anywhere i want down below okay so i can maybe put it right here and so that's it i can make changes to anything i want if i want to extend this right if i've got a larger field i can extend this if it's a long description or i can extend it all the way across that's going to be remembered right so now all we need to do is just click save that menu and that's going to save everything so we noticed now that it's it's been saved so it's been here if i navigate to the second page and then i navigate back we'll see that it's been saved now we're using the same column same rows so nothing's going to change you know columns or rows and we'll show those in a bit but notice that our changes have been saved so that's a really really nice benefit now you can take this kind of technology and you can you could bring it over to like something like invoices or proposals having that page navigation is going to really help us and we can also have some really so we've got a lot of features and functionality here we've got a menu name inside this little one area so i can't wait to show all that to you so that's kind of basic it so we, it's broken into four parts we've got our thumbnails and notice that our thumbnail has been updated here graphics items and then pictures are simple if we want to add pictures and we want to add a specific picture we can do that we can browse for a picture maybe we want a different maybe we want to put hamburgers on here so we can add that picture it's going to add that picture here. And once we do that we can then add that picture to our graphic if i want to put a picture up here i can put any kind of a picture up here i want if i want to remove it all i need to do is just click on it and click that x it's going to remove that i can also remove it from the library if i want by doing that okay great so you've seen a lot of cool things right away we're going to show you exactly how we did this what else do we have we have a few other sheets not too much but they're a basic admin sheet now inside the admin screen i've got some very very basic settings i've got a main folder now this main folder is where everything is stored okay so if we take a look at that inside this main resource folder i've got several food pictures i have menu pictures okay so these are pictures that we go on the menu and i've got page thumbnails now these are individual thumbnails that got created automatically i'll be showing you how to do that every time we make a change to a menu we get a thumbnail that's been created okay so that's kind of it. it's basically broken into three categories and so the first thing you want to do is make sure you get your destination here what is our destination you can browse for that menu folder here simply going to browse for it and we'll keep it right here called menu resources and just click okay we also want to get some default font sizes so when we add those menu items when we add a menu category when we add a menu item font right that item or the item just menu description the food description or the price we can set default fonts on that so if we want our font sizes to be larger we can set them here now remember when we brought over that food item here there was a picture that automatically got so if i click on desserts and salted caramel cheese and i click on that notice that that picture got here the font's still in black but the picture got automatically associated if i want to delete that i could just delete each individual item here what if i don't want to display those particular pictures in that case i would just click no here put no and then those pictures were not automatically added but they're easy to remove so that's pretty much it very very simple admin screen also what i have is a menu items database and we'll be getting into all this so basically once it's created on a menu once anything gets put on a menu here it gets stored in this database and we'll be going over that in detail the food items database this is where all of our food is stored we have an item id a name a category a description a price and a picture name and then a row although we're not using that in this particular training and then i've got a menu database right notice that there was two menus that got created it's very simple menu id and name how many pages and when was the last updated on so it's relatively simple as far as the data at least on this the the basically the detail on this the complexity is this is in the placement and the savings basically everything we place on this page we want to save it we want to know where it's been saved we want to know what size what font color what background and so on and so forth so we have to save all that data all that gets saved directly in one single database called the menu item database okay so we have that so basically what we want to do is we've got some loading when we when i click on a menu i want the first page of that menu to load up if i want to add a new page i can add a new page if i want to save it or click on a new menu i can create a brand new menu that's going to clear everything else out let's create uh, quickly create a new menu so we'll just call it sally salads here sally's salads okay and then all what we do is we're just going to save it and that's just going to save it as our third notice it's now appeared on our list here if i want to create a brand new list so let's say i want to go into pictures and i want to add a picture or maybe a background so we can add let's say a graphic let's put a box and i want to add a graphic to that just put a background color on that so i'm going to stretch that all the way across the top and all the way to the bottom and then we'll just bring it down 
And then maybe we'll add a transparency onto that. We can do transparency as well, which is kind of a nice. So let's uh, click on that and we'll go into uh, our shape format and we'll do the fill and we'll do more fill colors and then we'll add maybe a 50% transparency or something like that. So right about here, we'll put in the 50. And that's gonna kind of look nice, good for a background. We're not gonna create a full menu on this, but so we got a nice blue background and we can put a text on this and here and uh, let's put in Sally's. Sally's is gonna be our title and we can stretch it larger. It's gonna be a title, so it's gonna be big. And then I'll just bring that up to the top here. And then, all right, so we'll add in, a, let's bring this down while we're doing some formatting here and I'll give it a, a specific font, something design wise, which could be nice. And then maybe just Al, Algerian, okay. And then increase the font. Okay, so I like that. That looks pretty good here, Sally Salads kind of a dark and gloomy maybe we should change that color huh don't you think a little bit dark and gloomy let's do uh, a nice light yeah that looks so now what we can do is we can add pictures onto that so we've got a picture so maybe we want to add a main picture I've got a picture of a salad here so I'm gonna click that it's gonna to add it to our library once it's added to the library I want to make sure that we can add it to that so we're gonna put it up here and you can kind of get an idea of how we can create these. So Sally Salads. And now what we're gonna do is maybe we want some shapes and we have promotion. So we can add a promotion or a divider here if we want. Let's add a line here. Clicking on the lines can add this line and we can just then drag it over here and bring it on over here. And then we can color the line so it acts as a kind of a divider. And we can change the thickness of it and that'll be remembered as well. So we can just change it to the green color. It's kind of a nice look. And then the thickness, we can also change the thickness and that's gonna be remembered as well. So we have that there. Well, I'll just add some items to the menu. Of course, we're gonna click on salads. We'll click on salads. We've got several salads. I'll start out with an anapasta salad. It's gonna add the picture. And then I'll just hold the control and I'll bring those down and I'm just gonna bring it down. So we get an idea of exactly how quickly we can create one of these menus. I'll put another item, but you get the idea. We don't need to go to the entire menu and do all the items. So here we get an idea of exactly how we can create that. And let's just hold down the control here and click on all the items here, including the price, and then bring it down here. Okay, so there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save that menu. Now it's gonna save all the pages. So everything we save, and it's also gonna create a thumbnail automatically. So if we look in the pages, we've got a live thumbnail here. So when I click on that, if I wanna add a new page, I can do just that here. And uh, we can put in a shape. Let's just put in something temporary here. So we'll put in that shape just so we can differentiate between those two pages and see how quickly they get created. And so the pictures, the salad that we added gets remembered inside the library. So a library for that particular item. I'll remove this plus here. That should be removed. And then so we can easily add automatically. And again, saving that, what's going to do is going to automatically create that thumbnail. And so now we have two sheets so we can look between those. Now think about this potential. When you have different types of invoices, we could probably do this for invoices, proposals, estimates, or any type of business business operation this is kind of a graphic design this is visually pleasing but you could pretty much do this type of technology for just about any kind of form in Excel we'll show you how to do that all right so you get the idea of how we can create these very very quickly so we've got these three so why don't we start from here on the selection change when I make a selection change what do I want to happen well I want this information to load up so let's take a look at some of the behind the scenes and some of the hidden columns so let's take a look in columns a and b and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to view the headings and the formula bar that'll help us oh, and I'll bring this up here so we get a little more space all right so what do we have here so this is the selected menu type as you know we have four different types pictures items graphics and pages so I want b1 to change I want to understand exactly what particular menu type is visible at the time and why is that important because let's say if I make an update let's say pages is visible and I make an update let's say I make this I want to make this a little bit longer this background type a little bit longer I want to make sure that let's just make it long for the fun of it I want to make sure that that thumbnail gets updated and is visible so when I save that I want that thumbnail to automatically display those changes notice how that thumbnail changed so so I want to make sure if the thumb if pages is visible I want that thumbnail if it's not we don't need to update it okay so we have that so that's going to update in real time and i really like that ability so that the user has a very visual effect on that and you'll see how it changes again automatically so we want to make sure we understand exactly what tab is visible whether it's pictures items graphics or pages okay i also want to know the menu id now this is the individual id for the menu so this is id one two and three and they're going to basically tie into this menu database menu id one two and three now i've got a named range for that as you can imagine a name manager not too many on this this one's simply called menu id menu id located right here using an offset formula 
And it's going to capture all the menus ID. Go numerical. So for every new one we create, it's going to be the next one. I also want to know what row this is on. If I've got menu ID, I need to know it's on row four. So in order to do that, I need to use a match. So we're going to put that right here. That menu row is four. We're going to use a match. Whatever's in B2, that's the menu ID. Based on the named range, we're going to match it. We're adding three because we want to know the first column. That's going to tell us exactly what it is. I also want to know the next menu ID. We're going to use the max formula to determine the next one. If there's no date at all, we're going to default it to one. Okay, next up, what else do I want to show? I want to know the selected menu row. We're going to use conditional formatting. So I've got some conditional formatting. When I make a selection to a row on selection change, whatever the row the user has selected, I'm going to put directly inside B5. And we have conditional conditional formatting that's going to trigger. So we go into conditional formatting and we manage rules and we see that we've got B5 is equal to row and we basically have a blue fade from light blue to white and a bold font here. So that's all we're going to have to do for that and that's going to automatically trigger that. So now we've got the menu row. I also want to know what page I need to, what page are we on? If we have a menu that has multiple pages as this one, Fredder's Pizza does, I want to know what page we're on. So I always want to keep track of that. And so we, now we're showing that it's page two. So this went to page two or page two of three. And I also want to know what the total menu page is. How many pages are in a specific menu? Now that's tracked inside our menu database. If we take a look here, we have the total. So when we load that menu, this number is going to come over into here into B7. Now, if I add a page to that, this is going to change to four. I also want to know the selected menu shape. Right? So if I'm here and I select a specific shape, I want to know what shape I've selected. So each one of these shapes has a name here. If we take a look and click on a specific shape, we're going to see this is called circle shape. We're going to see that this is called rectangle shape, rectangle REC shape. Now each one of those, keep in mind they have nine characters. Every one very specifically have nine characters, round rectangle shape. Then we have here a text box shape, a line shape, and uh, lastly we have the parallel shape. Okay, so each one of those, I want to know when I make a selection on this, there's a macro that's going to take that shape name and it's going to put it directly into B8. So that when I create it, when I duplicate it, I'm going to know which one to duplicate. So I need to know if I click here, the same plus is going to be moved over. So when I click on this plus, I need to know what shape to add. When I create a macro, that macro is going to know what shape do I add here? Well, you're going to add whatever's based on this. So based on that rectangle shape, that's what we're going to be adding. I also want to know some text. So this is a particular formula. Now this is a text box right here. If you say I've got a text box, this text box here is connected to B9 using a formula. And that is because this is a dynamic text. The text of this text box I want to change as I navigate pages. So if I move to the previous page, notice the text changes from pages one of three. So that has to be tied to a specific cell and it's tied to this. All I need to do is just say equals using a formula whatever B6 is that selected page of B7, B7 meaning the total pages. So once I put that together in a text string, I can then attach that text string to a text box and then have a dynamic text inside that shape box. So this is just a shape box. I also want to know what shape number, shape number is going to be as we add shapes and I'll go over that in a little bit of detail. The library picture is important because that keeps track of how many pictures we have in our library. So I want to know that as we add more. So notice it says five, right? So the next one's going to be five. Also, I know that select the library picks. The category, or this may not be necessary. The cow, oh, this is important. When I select an item from the library here, I want to make sure that that selected shape in B10, this one's important here. As I select any shape, I need to know what shape I've selected. Notice how B10 changes. Look, menu, shape, dash food description 79. I'll go into exactly what all that means. So each one of those, just to note, every time we select it, whatever the name of the shape is going to go directly into B10 via a macro. So I want to make sure that's important. All right. So when I select a library picture, the name of that picture is going to be placed directly inside B13. I want to know what picture to add. So it's going to be that library picture. I also want to know a select a category row. If I select an item, we've got some conditional formatting that's going to appear here. And I want to know that's the same conditional formatting here that's just as we did in the menus. So when I select it, whatever row we've selected here is going to go directly into B15. If I select a specific item, whatever row that item on, using conditional formatting, it's going to go directly here in B16. I also have a sample text. When I create a brand new text, I need to duplicate something. I don't. I could create a new one, but it's easier to duplicate. So I've used this as a sample. It's simply a sample shape called text 
box shape. Whether I add a menu item or whether I'm adding a text box here in the graphics, same thing. That text box here is going to get duplicated. If I add that, it's going to add intertext. All we're doing here, you see that it's simply duplicating this and creating, allowing the user to then put it in. If I want to delete it, I can just click delete. Okay, great. So that's pretty much a rundown of everything in columns A and B. But let's take a look at some of the things that we want to understand. Let's take a look at this menu here. We'll start out with the item type. So in this item type, so I've got a menu. It's going to load all of the pictures that are associated with this particular menu. It's going to load all the items that we have in our library. And, th and the reason I did this not per menu is because maybe you have a Christmas menu. Maybe you have a, some kind of holiday menu or a birthday menu or something, and you want to use the same types of food but in different menus. So you want to create a seasonal menu or holiday menu or a very specific menu. That way you can search from the same list of foods. That food database is here. So regardless of the menu, your list here is going to be the same. As you add items into that database, they're going to appear here. So that's regardless of the menu. And then we've got the graphics, so we can show specific graphics. And then we have the pages. Okay, so let's get into the macros that run that. Now it's gonna be in your side of your developer. We're gonna click on the visual basic here. And what we're gonna do is gonna take it to food items. Now this is a particular module here that we're gonna start on. And what we wanna do is we want to make sure that we don't need this category items. So this is gonna add our items, food items, excuse me, let's go in item types, our item types here. This is the one I wanted to show you first. We're gonna start out with this one because it's a great way to start. So I've dimensioned a bunch of variables and we'll get into that. So the first thing what I wanna do is before we go into anything, I wanna create a macro called check menu folder. Now all this macro does, as you know, all of these pictures, all these graphics, whatever we get stored, the pictures here, or the pictures for the items or pictures for the thumbnail pages, they have to be stored somewhere. And if you remember, we've set a folder here. I wanna make sure that this folder is accurate because we can't really save anything without unless we have a specific folder. So we wanna instruct the user. If they have not yet set that folder, we wanna instruct them to make sure they set the folder. We're giving this a named range called menu folder, menu folder. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna to check to make sure it's accurate. If it's not, we need to let the user know. So I'm gonna use this macro throughout the application what we're going to do is we're going to check that named range using brackets. If the menu folder is empty, that means that there's no data in there, no strings in there, or maybe it's an incorrect path. If I were to give you this workbook with my folder path in there, it wouldn't work for you. So directory, we're going to check for that path. If the directory of the menu folder, VB directory equals empty, then please select a folder for your menu resources. We're going to instruct the user. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to instruct them to browse for that menu folder. And that's a macro. That macro is right here. In this macro, we're just going to dimension the resources as a file dialog. And that resources file, we're picking a folder. Remember, we want the user to select a specific folder so with that folder we're going to give it a title called menu resources folder okay and so we want to instruct the user to do that and we're just allowing them a single folder if they haven't made any selection we're going to skip it whatever the selected path that they're going to choose we're going to put it in the admin f7 that's all we're going to do that's all we need to do for that okay so when it comes to the menus the first thing what i want to do when I, regardless of any one i select i want to hide everything first so what do we want to hide? Well, I want to hide any picture. Now, any of these pictures. Now, this one's called library pick four. This one's called library pick seven, 95, and so on and so forth. These numbers are associated, just so you know, with the row here in the database. So this is row seven, the library pick. You saw another one that was 95. So they're associated with the row. That's how we know where it's stored. And it's also given a type called library picture. All right, continuing on. So what I want to do is I want to remove all of them. Also want to, this, this group here, this group here is called a graphics group. I want to hide this group. I also want to hide any thumbnails. These are called menu one, page one, menu one, page two, menu one, page three. So I want to make sure that those are actually, we can delete these and recreate these each time if we need to, but we certainly want to at least hide them. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. I want to hide everything. So I'm going to use the same macro to do that. So basically one macro that hides everything. And then when we click on the individual menus, pictures or items or whatever, we will then show only what we need to. So the first thing what we want to do is that graphics group. That's that group of shapes that we saw inside the graphics. I want to hide that. Certainly we need that, but I want to hide it on my, you know, no matter what. So we're going to hide it. Then what I want, we have the browse menu picture. Remember we have a browse button here under the pictures. This particular browse button, that add picture, I want to hide that too. That's called browse menu. Certainly we don't want to see that. So we're going to hide that automatically. Also add item button. We have an add item button. What is that? That is here. We've got an add item. 
so let's uh, hear this one here so this particular button here is called add shape button we have an add item button i want to hide that too so this one here so we're going to add that in so we're hiding this also the add category button so this is this is the button here i remember now so add item button this particular button is called add item button i've got another one that i haven't used maybe on patreon what i'm going to do is i thought about the idea and that means once you select an entire category i want to add all these items to the menu wouldn't that be cool so if you want to see that on patreon let me know patreon is a great great service that we're using and it's a platform that we have you create the ideas i create the updates for these applications and that's what we call feature fix or focus so if there's a feature you want to see you want me to focus on a specific area or maybe there's an issue you want me to fix i'm doing all that for every single training on patreon so if you've got ideas you have something you want to see like adding this group or doing other things we are going to do that on patreon so keep that in mind i'll include the link down below if you want to join us on patreon for just a few dollars a month it's a great way to support the channel all right so we're going to hide those buttons so we need to make sure we hide those as well the page title we're going to hide that page title if we take a look inside here this one's got a page title this is an actually it's not a cell it is a shape called page title we want to hide that so what i want is i want to clear item categories and names if there's anything been selected we're going to clear a bunch of cells so any of the item categories if we take a look in here certainly I want to make sure we clear everything here out so from e3 these are cells all the way through f and down we want to make sure that we're clearing those out all the way through g and i'll explain why g is also in there and also what i want to do is i want to make sure that we are clearing out uh, anything else b15 and b16 those are the selected category or select the item row i want to clear these fields out too so we clear those out okay i also want to remember remove any of the library pick shapes or the page shapes both both of those are important so we need to delete those out completely delete them so what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the shapes in the entire sheet it's actually quite quick what i'm going to do is i'm going to look for any shape that contains the word library pick or the string library pick i'm going to delete it if it's found and then also in the pages i'm going to look through all the shapes in the sheet i'm going to look for anything that says maybe menu page or underscore page or anything like that and i'm going to delete it we're using underscore page for that so what we're going to do is we're going to do this this is a defined shape picture shape as a shape if we see dimension picture shape as a shape so we're going to loop through all of the shapes inside the sheet inside dot shapes because we're on the menu so what we're going to do is we're going to check for that using the in string command we're going to look for the name of that shape we're looking inside the picture shape name what are we looking for we're looking for anything that contains library pick if it returns one or more that means this string is contained inside the name if it is i want to delete that shape you're going to do the same exact thing for the page if underscore page if it is found inside the shape inside the shape name we are going to delete it so that's how we work with shapes and quickly delete any of those so then i'm just going to select some other cell and that's going to help us so i just want to make sure we select other cells and the reason is that is because just to make sure that we're not selecting anything in particular so what do we have to do well now we've cleared everything out but let's say they select pictures everything's been deleted what do i want to do i want to load any pictures that are associated with this menu any pictures that are associated with. well how do we know well those are stored inside our database so what we're going to be doing is we're going to store library pick four inside our da database and we're going to give it a specific type called library picture it's based on menu item one so what i want to do is i want to run an advanced filter and i want to look inside menu id one for any particular item called library picture here's the name and here's the page the page doesn't really help because it doesn't matter because i'm going to allow us to use this picture on any page but i thought it might be helpful so what i need to do is run an advanced filter and that's just what i've done here so we have a menu id one and we have an item type of library if i run an advanced filter using this as criteria it's going to return all of the particular pictures for that one it's going to have that picture name all the way down here and the row that's associated with that the row that's associated with that picture because if we make an update, we need to know where it's located. So the row is going to help us out because the row is going to be attached to the name 4, 7, 95, and 119. Those are the database rows. So we're going to bring this row over. Notice this formula here. It's going to tell us what row. This is the database row. So if I bring this information, if I bring the picture name and I bring the row, I can create a shape based on that. And that's important because if I delete it, I need to also delete it from the database. Take a look at these numbers, 4, 7, 95, and 119. If we take a look at these names, library pick four, 
library pick seven, library pick 95, and library pick 119. Notice the rows. And why is that important? Because if I add that, if I want to delete it from our library, it's going to automatically delete from, it's going to know what row it's on because it's going to remove the word library. It's going to know to delete row number seven in our library because we're going to delete it. Okay, so that's how we know. So that's why we have that there. So what I want to do is run that advanced filter and I want to find out based on the library picture, all of the pictures associated with that. I'm going to look at these names and I'm going to know where they're stored because they're stored directly in the folder called uh, menu pictures. Menu pictures is where I've located it and they're stored inside menu pictures. Let's take a look at pizza background. We see the pizza wood grain background is here and the pizza background is here. So we've got them all located in this folder so we can easily extract them from the folder and then insert them in the sheet. And that's exactly what we're going to do inside the menu pictures. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is check for the menu folder. We went over that macro right up here. We're just going to make sure that we're checking and make sure it's an accurate folder. You'll see this macro throughout the application. So with the menu pictures, the first thing what I want to do is I want to set the menu type in B1 to library pick. Remember that's B1 right here. We're setting that type here. So if I choose, change this to pictures, or change it back to items and then back to pictures, you see B1 is going to change to library pick. So we want to set that we need to know. Also, what I want to do is I want to set E2 to library pictures. In this case, I've just given it a name. One way we can do that is just to simply put in library pictures right up here. So we can add in a name. I could also keep this as item. I'll make sure to update that. So as we go through that, I need to change it in item pictures too. We'll get to that in just a moment. I'll make sure to update that to this description. So this is going to be called library pictures. So we're updating that. In fact, I'm going to just going to copy that right now before I forget that. And we're going to put it right in here menu. I don't know why I didn't do a page here. And this is going to be called menu items. So we're going to update that for menu items, menu items. Okay, so continuing on with our library here, then what we're going to do is we want to display that browse button. That browse button must also be displayed called browse menu pick button. We need to show that. So to make it visible, shapes browse menu picture button visible equals MS true. Then we're going to run a macro called library load pictures. So let's take a look inside that macro that we're actually going to load. We're going to go into the definition. It's going to take us to the library. I've got a module called library pictures. So we got a few of them. Let's go through the flow and see what we have here. So first we want to browse for that. Remember we had a browse button. It's going to let us know to add a picture. If I want to add a picture, I can do it just that. You saw that before. And so that's going to macro that's tied to this button. It's going to let us add a picture to the library. Okay, so taking a look inside that macro, what we're going to be doing, we're going to make sure if B3 is empty, I want to make sure before we add any pictures, I want to make sure that we are actually saving that. That's why it's very important to save this menu first. Why is that important? Because as soon as we save it, we're going to get an associated menu ID. I need to make sure that this is saved. And why is that important? Because remember, every time we add a picture, I want to make sure that we assign an ID for that library picture. Very important. So to do that, we want to make sure the user has saved that menu. Saving that menu is critical. If B3, which is the row that's associated, the database row, if that's empty, we know it has not been saved yet. Okay, so moving ahead. So we want to make sure. We're going to, again, check the menu folder and make sure that they have a correct. We're going to set that menu ID based on B2. B2 is the menu ID. I want to set the picture number. I want to keep track of what number we're on. It's going to be in B12 because that's going to help us locate. So we know the next picture is going to be five. If we add one, it's going to help us put it down below here, although it depends on the picture dimensions as well. So that's going to keep track of what picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the menu picture you're going to be able to application file dialog. This is a file picker. We're picking a specific file, a single file. Please select a picture that's going to focus on that menu picture. We want to only use pictures. So we're going to set some filters to either JPG, PNG, GIF, or JPEG, and also allowing multi-select no. If they make, don't make a selection, we're going to drop it down here, uh, all the way down here to no selection if they don't make a selection. Okay, if they do make a selection, we're going to set that menu folder in the string. Now keep in mind that our named range is called menu folder. Our ver string variables should be different, not the same because it creates issues. So it's called menu folder. This is the folder of our menu. This is the one that's stored inside our admin. It's going to put this into a string variable. Once we have that into a string variable, we can then set that picture name. I want to know what the picture name is. It's going to be the directory of the select items. And it, basically that just means the name of the picture. Like it's going to be pizza.jpg. That is the name of the picture. So it's going to include the extension. I also want to set the picture path. The picture path is going to be based on a menu folder. We're going to put it inside that folder menu pictures. Remember, it's got to go inside this menu 
menu pictures folder so it's going to go inside that and then also what we're going to do is going to add that picture name this is the full file path of that picture what i want to do is from wherever the user has browsed it wherever they've pulled it i want to put it in a very specific location i want to put it in this folder so i don't know where they've found it but wherever they found it i want to copy it and put it in here so to do that i want to make sure that we it's not already in that folder if it is already in that folder we don't need to move it so if the picture path the path that we want to place it is the same as the current path we can skip copying it if the directory menu folders if the directory if that folder doesn't exist we need to create that folder how do we know if it doesn't exist the directory menu folder and the menu pictures if it's empty that means that folder doesn't exist we can make it using mk directory we can create that folder this will create the folder if it doesn't exist so create folder if not existing okay all right so now that we know that we've created it now what we're doing is we're ready to copy it from wherever the user found it this is the file path of where the user has found it this is the destination where we're going to put it inside the picture path we're going to copy that to the new location so now we've copied it over so that's great but what i also want to do is i want to add to that database remember it's got to be here inside the database i want to put a few things i don't want to fill out all these fields but for the library i want to put the menu id the type page number it may not be that important actually and the picture name and i also want to make sure that we have a row that's associated so i want to fill out these c may not be important at least for our purposes today and uh, column v so we're going to put all four of those information in inside column a we're going to first get the first uh the available menu item row based on the menu items database the first available row plus one that's the first row inside a we're going to put the menu id inside b we're going to set that item tape to library picture inside c we're going to set the page number although we're not necessarily using it in this particular training d is going to take on the name of the picture and v is going to take on the row or putting in that formula okay so now that we've added to the database we want to insert it into our library so we're going to do that by inserting that picture path we also want to give it a very specific name that name is going to be called library plus the menu item row remember that's the database row then what i want to do is i want to use a little bit of a formula i want to set the top position and the left position and so basically what i want to do is i'm going to have alternating so i know if i keep track of this picture number one two three four and five notice we keep track of it based on what's in b12 five is going to be placed on the left six is going to go on the right seven is going to go on the left and so on and so forth so we know that the odd ones are going to go on the left the even ones are going to go on the right and that's how we get two columns of pictures so to do that we're going to determine whether it's odd or even so if the picture number mod of two equals one meaning it's odd if the picture number is mod we're going to set the left position equal to e1 plus 15. so here's e1 plus 15 that's going to move it over to the right however if excuse me if it's odd it's going to go on the left odd left e1 plus 15 so this is 15. however it's even it's going to go over to the right we're going to move it over even more if it is even one two three and four okay so else it's even so what we're going to do is we're going to add 90 meaning we want to move it more over to the right okay so it's going to set our left position based on whether it's odd or even we're going to use the mod that's going to tell us whether we're at an odd or even number we know if the mod of two of your number if it returns one it's an odd number okay so now what we want to do is the library top picture number plus the picture number mod two for basically this formula here kind of confusing but basically it's simply going to determine based on the picture number how far down we're just simply setting the top position as you move and you can see it doesn't really you know it's kind of confusing i know this is kind of complicated part but basically it kind of moves it down it's not even accurate i could probably update this a little bit but it's really based on the picture above it so i kind of wanted it even so we can kind of get a good idea but it really does depend this is a very vertical picture but some are horizontal so it kind of depends it's not a perfect science here at all but this formula will help us determine that although it's not as exact as i might like it but it's okay because it really depends your pictures have different dimensions okay so what i want to do is i want to place that picture the left position based on the library left position the top position i'm going to give it a very specific width and i also want to give it a specific macro called library select picture notice that when we hover these something happens right we can click on them it's going to let us show the plus and the x although they should probably at the same height i'll update those so what i want to do is because i want to either add it to the menu or i want to delete it from the library so selecting we want some things to happen so we're giving it a macro here every time we add a new picture from there from browsing it we need to increment the picture the menu picture all right so b12 equals b12 this keeps track of the menu picture so we want to increase this number all the time as we add them okay the library select picture now this is the macro that happens when i select as you saw it we have a few things 
things that happen. I want to add this plus and the X, although they should be at the same type. Let's get rid of this one here. We don't need that. I want those two tops to be at the same height. Okay. So there we go. I like that better. So what we're going to do is when we select on it, we want some things to happen. Well, what is it that we want to happen? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to determine what was selected. I need to know where to place these. Remember when I make a selection. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to take that name and I want to put it inside of B13. B13 is going to take on the name of the shape. Okay, so it's going to take on the name and it's going to put it in B13. That's using application color. Just a reminder, when you run this macro from here, it's going to create an error because there is nothing that called the macro. There's no shape just created here. Okay, so if we debug it, we see application color is going to create an issue. Okay, so then we're going to focus on with the library delete button. I want to place that. That library delete is right here, that little X here. That's called library delete. And I also want to place the add picture button. Both of those should be placed on the shape or near the shape. So where are we going to place it? The left is going to be basically the left position of whatever shape we've called it. Plus, we're going to place plus the width. That means we want it on the right side. So basically, we're taking the left position and we're adding the width. It's going to place it directly on the right. The top position is going to be basically be the application called the top position. We want to make sure it's visible and we want it brought to the front Z order. MSO bring to front is going to bring that to the front. We want it on top of all the other shapes. We're going to do very something very similar with the add picture. The only difference in this shape is we want it to appear on the left. So we're going to do left minus 10. That's going to appear on the left of that top visible MSO true. So basically the, the, act, the plus shows up on the left, the X shows up on the right, regardless of what we select. Okay, it's the same plus button, the same X, or it's the same button. We're just changing the position. So we have that. Now we say if we click on library add picture. What is that? That is the macro that's tied to this button here. If we click on the assigned macro, we see it's called library add picture. That's the macro we go. What happens when we do that? When I add it, it's going to add, do a few things. It's going to add it to our menu here. It's also going to add it to our database here. So we want to make sure that we can do that. So when we do that, there's a few things that are going to happen. First of all, we're going to focus on the menu as we are often doing. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to set, of course, B13. If it's empty, right, we got to exit the sub. B13 is the shape that we've selected. Now we want to make sure we're going to know what picture we're adding. So if there's no picture in B13, we can remove it. The menu ID, we're going to set that to B2. It's going to be in a variable. I also want to know what row we're setting, the library pick row. Remember, we want to extract that row. That row is going to be attached to here. So we want to extract seven or I want to extract four. How do I do that? I can simply remove the word library or the string library pick. And what that's going to leave us with is the um, menu, the row menu. So we're going to do that with the library picture row is going to be replaced b13 value that's the name we're removing library pick and we're replacing it with nothing what that's going to do is going to get that menu item row or that library item the row that it's associated with it that's the row that's located right here right if we've got four it's going to tell us what row it's associated on so that what we're going to do we know where it's been placed okay continuing on once we have that i wanted to mention the, the picture name now the name of the picture is located in column d of that library Here's the name of that picture. I want to put that name of the picture. I need to create that picture or duplicate it. So it's important to have that name. I know what folder it is, but here's the name right here in column D. If I have the folder along with the name, that is the full file path. I can combine that and then I can insert the picture accordingly. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to determine the picture name. We're going to make sure we have a menu folder. We're going to set that picture path. It's simply going to be the menu folder plus the menu pictures in that folder, plus the picture name. That is the full file path. Checking to make sure it is accurate. If it's not empty, if it's empty, we're going to simply exit the sub. However, if it's not, we're going to insert it into the library. We're going to set the menu item row. I want to know the first available row. I need this. Now, this is only, for, keep this in mind, this is only for our library item. Then I need to set that picture up. I need to know the first available row. Well, that first available row is right here, 167. So we're going to set that called the menu item row. It's going to be that first available row. We're going to set a shape name. I want to know the shape name. I'm going to give it a very specific name. Every shape on our menu, every single shape, regardless of what it is, it's going to have the first start. It's also going to be called menu shape and then a dash. And this is important because when I need to clear them out, I need to know which 
shapes are associated with the menu. So they all start with menu, shape, and dash. Then it's going to be the type, and then it's going to be the database row. And keep in mind that everything, these are all very specific, meaning uh, the number of characters so that I can easily extract the row out of it, regardless whether it's a picture or whether it is a description or whether it is the name or whether it's the price. It's We're always going to start it out. Then we're going to use basically nine, let's see, eight characters here. And then we're going to use the row. So that's how we do it. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to setting that. So the shape name is simply equal to the menu shape and then the type. It's a menu picture. So that's the type. Again, eight characters, very important, eight characters. Then the row that's associated with that. And that's important because if we delete it, I need to remove this part, the first, I think, 17 characters. And then we're, it's going to leave us the row and then we know what row to delete. So we're going to insert that picture, pictures, insert path. And we're going to give it that shape name that we've just created created. That's going to insert the shape and we're going to place it. We're going to lock the aspect ratio of the picture. We're going to set a, a default width of 200. Of course, the user can change that. We're going to set the left. Basically, what I want to do is I just want to center. If I decide to add a picture, I want that pretty much centered somewhere in here. So it's going to be, I just put it at row, I think 21 or something, and then just centered in column J. So to centered in column J, what we're going to do is we're going to take the left position of J, column J. We're going to add to that. What do I want to add to that? I want to add to that the total width of column J minus the total width of the picture and divide it by two. What that's going to do is going to get us to determine the left position centered in that specific column. If we were going to do more than one column, we would just do J1 through K or whatever. We'd get the total width of all the columns associated. We're going to set the top position just default based on row 21. And then we're going to give it a macro. We're going to assign a macro to that. It's called menu shape select, which we're going to get to. So then again, we also need to add this to the database. We've already determined the first available row. We're simply going to add the menu ID to column A. The item type, we set the item type already called menu picture. I want to know very specifically what the item type is. Menu picture. Notice menu picture, it is the same item type inside the name menu picture here. So same thing here, almost the same. Good enough so that they're familiar, we can set those up. Then what we want to do is I want to set, I want to know what page this is associated with. When I load that specific page, I need to only load it on one specific page. So that page is going to come directly from B6. B6 holds our page number, that selected page number. We're going to bring that in there. Then what we want to do is I want to have the picture name. We're going to set that picture name into column D and then column V is going to take on that database row. So that's everything we need to do is simply to add that picture to that. Okay, what is next up? So now when we focus on the picture, we also want to delete the picture. Next up is deleting. When I delete the picture, something is going to happen. So this is for how do we do that? Well, first thing, if I want to delete an item from the library, this macro here is what we're going to be focused on, deleting an item from the library. If I go ahead and click assign macro, we see it's called library delete pictures, library delete picture. That is the one we're going to focus on right here. So the first thing we want to know is we need to know which one we've selected on. B13 is going to let us know that name that we've selected on. So if I want to delete this salad, I click here, it's going to delete. So how do I know which one to delete? Well, B13 is going to tell me just that. That's the one we selected. Remember, as we select on it, B13 changes the name. So we need to make sure that we have value. If it's empty, we can exit the sub. Picture name is going to be based on B13. I also need to know the item row. Not only do I need to delete it from here, I also need to delete it from our database. So I need to know the row that's associated. How do I know the row? Well, if I remove the word library pick, I know that it's going to leave us with the row number. I know what row to delete inside our database. So to do that, we're going to say the menu item row is going to be used, replace the picture name. And we're going to remove the word library pick, and that's going to leave us with the menu item row. Once we have that menu item row, then I can delete that associated picture. That just deletes it from the screen. It does not delete it from the database. However, the next line will do that, do just that. Menu items database, menu item row, colon, menu item row, delete, delete the library from the picture. Once we do that, we are going to make hide the delete button and hide the add button, right? So these two buttons here, the add and the delete also should be hidden. That's it. That's all we have to do. So when I delete it, if we take a look at this one here, we see that this is one library pick 119. If we go down to row 119, 
we see that we have this item library pick salads png so if i go back here and i delete that it's, it's going to reload run a macro to reload that we're going to take a look at 119 you see now it's no longer the library picture is gone from there so that's how we delete it from the library okay but what about that macro that's going to load those pictures remember we need to reload these pictures once we delete it we're running a macro called load library pictures i need to reload that library so that only those other pictures can as i mentioned to you we're going to run an advanced filter for this particular one here Again, and we're going to only know which library pictures for a specific menu using the advanced filter criteria here menu id and library picture here that's the macro that we're going to do right now the first thing what i want to do is i want to clear i'm going to delete any existing all of these existing pictures from the library must get deleted first so to do that we're going to run a loop so for each library picture which is dimensioned as a shape this is a shape variable right here library pick shape so for each one of those we're going to loop throughout shapes inside the sheet now we're going to check if it contains using the in string function we're going to look inside the name of that shape if inside the name it contains the word string library picture meaning greater than zero then we're simply going to delete it we do this a lot throughout the application okay we're going to reset the picture number we want to reset that library to one that b12 keeps track of the number of pictures in our library then also we want to focus on the database we're going to run that advanced filter we're going to set the criteria to library pick that's the one we want to focus on library pick if we look at our database here i only want to return those items with library pick so z3 must contain that z3 is going to do that i want to set the last item row based on the uh, database inside our menu items database if it's less than four that means we have no data we can exit the sub out we're going to run our advanced filter from a3 all the way through b basically that's all of our data because we want to include the row here so that's important all the way from a3 and but we're really going to returning just a few things all i want to return is the picture name and the row and we're just going to use the criteria for y through z so if we take a look inside here our criteria is y2 through z and we want to return ac through ad2 so we're returning these fields ac this is where we want the data only the picture name and the row or are we going to have those results appear in those two columns and that's it we want to determine the last item row i need to know all the items so the last item row is five in this case because i'm going to loop through these and i'm going to add these pictures accordingly to our library so the last item row is going to be based on column ac if it's less than three we can exit the sub out we're going to run a loop for the result row which is the long variable from three to the last result row another long variable picture name is going to be located inside a string variable ac in the result row this is our picture name and we have our picture number it's going to be located in b12 i need to increment these picture numbers so we're going to be adding those up the menu item row that row associated in column ad right so we're pulling from ac the name and ad is going to take on the row that picture path again all we need to do is combine the menu folder we know it's in the folder menu pictures and we know the picture name this is going to set the full file path then again we're doing exactly what we did before we're going to if the directory path is empty we're going to go to the next picture i'll speed this up because it's identical we're inserting the picture we're giving it a very specific name based on the row we're going to check to make sure the left position are we putting in whichever column based on its odd or even we're setting the top position and then we're just simply going to set the left top position we're going to set a default width and we're going to also set the macro this is exactly the same as when we browse for it except we're running this in a loop then we're going to set the menu item we're going to just going to increment for each picture we add b12 is going to increment and that's it that's all we have to do for the library pictures okay so that's it for the library pictures all we need to do we just went over everything we need all the features inside this library so as we were before this what we were looking at is the item types and menus so we went through the menu pictures and then load the library pictures now let's focus on the menu items now the menu items are located right here what i want to do is i want a unique list of categories and then i want to select here and i want anything in this particular category to display here when i make a selection here i want only the salads pasta main dish and so on and so forth okay so the first thing what i want to do is i want to get that unique list of categories that's going to come directly from our food menus and here's our category so we're going to want that unique list i'm going to place that list here 
And then I want to place that list directly inside here. But the first thing we want to do is make sure we clear all the data out here. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing inside our menu items, I want to set B1 to items, right? I want to make sure it shows items so we know which one we're on. Next up, what I want to do is I want to set that title, right? Menu items here, just as we set that. I just set that for you. I'm going to set that title. And then I want to set categories. Menu E3 is going to be categories and items, right? I want that subheading categories and items here. We can use shape. I've used shapes. I just showed you both. In this one, we used a shape here, or in this one, we're using two, we're using cells. So we can use either one. I'm showing you both here. So categories and items, we're setting the heading and then the subheadings right here. So we've done all that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get those unique categories, focusing now on our food items database, determining the last row. It's less than three, we're gonna exit the sub. We're gonna delete the criteria. This is very important. If I create an advanced filter that contains a criteria on this sheet, then I try running another advanced filter with no criteria, it's gonna automatically add any criteria that was there before. So I wanna delete, because this filter contains no criteria, what do I mean by no criteria? Well, what I mean is I only want a unique list of categories. That's all I want. So we don't need to have any criteria for that. And so we've left that blank inside our code, but we're gonna make sure to delete any criteria, any named range called criteria. This automatically gets created when we have criteria. So we're going to delete it here. And next up, we can see too, we're gonna to have just the column. I really only focus on categories, the column C, so that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna run an advanced filter. I only want unique values, and I wanna place those unique values directly inside M2, that's the header. And that's gonna give us our unique list of categories. I wanna determine the last row based on column M. If it's less than three, we can exit the sub out. If it's not, what we're going to be doing is we're simply going to place that directly inside the menu range here, E4 through E in the last results row plus one. Why are we adding one? Because our results inside our menu starts on row four, our results here starts on row three, so we need to add one to compensate. It's gonna bring over all the unique categories. Okay, very good. So now what we've done is we have automatically loaded the items, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select E4. Why am I selecting E4? Because when I select E4 automatically inside the code, let's say we select, when I select that, it's gonna load our first category automatically, E4. When I make that selection, it's going to load that up. Let's take a quick look at that and see how that happens, okay? Then we're gonna get into the other ones. When I go inside our menu here, we're gonna focus on the selection change. When I make a selection, when I make a selection change on anything with a value in column E, I want to load that category. So we're gonna focus on that, and that's gonna be down here, E4, to E99, we make a selection change on anyone, and we want to make sure that E contains a value, and also want to make sure B1 is items, right? making sure that we're focused on items. In that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that target row, that row, and put it into B15. Remember, that's our conditional formatting. I want to know what row we've selected. That's going to go into, again, B15. That's going to trigger the conditional formatting. B16, I want to clear anything that's in B16. Basically, if I've selected a particular item and I select another category, I want to clear out any selected row for any item, and that's going to be located in B16, so we're clearing that out. This may be in Patreon, so I'll just keep that. So what we're going to be doing is I want to take the food items database 03 and the target value. What does this mean? I'm going to be running an advanced filter. I want to know only those items associated with pizza. So to do that inside our thing, what we're going to do is we're going to add that criteria. and I'm going to put it directly inside here, 03. So whatever the user selected, we're going to put it here. We're going to run, then run an advanced filter. We're going to have those results come here. I want the name in the row. I think that's all we need in this case. I want to have only those pizzas, and I want to have, bring those over directly inside our menu and bring them directly inside here. Now, that's all we're going to do for that. Okay, so we're gonna, that's why we need to place. This is our category criteria, category criteria for our advanced filter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to load the category. We're going to run a macro called load selected category items. So let's take a look inside that macro. Load category. That's going to load all those items just as we said. So what I'm going to do is going to click on the definition here. It's going to be called load category items. So I'm going to take a look at this. Inside this, again, we're clearing any existing menu items here. All the way. Any, I want to clear any existing menu items because we're going to be loading new ones. We're going to focus on that food database, determining the last row with less than three. We're going to run that advanced filter just as I had mentioned here. 
gonna, that criteria is going to be O2 through O3, and we want the results to come Q2 through R2. So our results are simply these two columns here, Q2, the name in the row. That's all I want to do. I want to determine the last row, which is 12, and I want to bring all of those over directly inside this column. And I also want to bring the row number. I want to place it in this column. If I click here, you see it's three. If I click here, you see it's four, but you can't see it. It's hidden. You can't see it here. You can only see it in the formula bar. Why is that? Because I've given it a specific format that hides it because I don't want to see it. And it's going to be a custom format, and it's two semicolons. Two semicolons is going to hide it. If it's only numbers, we can use two semicolons. If it's numbers and letters, alphanumeric, we can use three semicolons to hide it. When I give it that condition format, it hides the row number. Why is it important? I need the row number because if I decide I'm going to add this, I want to know what row we're adding. I want to know which information was the row because I want to add the picture and all the information that's associated with this. So it's very important that I know what row it's associated because if I add that item, I need to know what the description, what the price is. I need to know the name and all that good stuff. It's important we have the name there, but I want to make sure we load all that. Okay, so we're going to bring those, determine the last results row, and then we're just simply bringing it over F through G. Now, F through G is those two columns. F is the items, G is, of course, the database row for the specific food item, bringing that in, although it is hidden. So F through G is simply equal to here we have our uh, Q three all the way down. So that's all the way to the last row. So Q three through R all the way down. Again, we're adding one because our row starts on four here and starts on three here. So that's all we have to do to add those items. Okay, good. So we understand that exactly how to add the items. We went over how to add the items. And that's exactly what we do when we add those item categories. So now we understand once in the items, we understand how we click on categories, how we select items, and how we show that up. Now we've gone over pictures and items. What about the graphics? Now graphics here is really cool. And that's going to be the next one inside our list here. So graphics here. Let's pull up our item type menu. We already went over items. And now it's time for graphics. Graphics is relatively simple simple. We don't need this. We don't have associate pictures. So basically all I did is create a group of shapes here and I've got a circle in here which is not actually quite round. It should be round, shouldn't it? 0 0.4, 0 0.45. I think I stretched out that group a bit. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is set to the group. So I want this group of shapes displayed only on graphics. So this is the group is called here. We see we'll select something there, graphics group. So we're going to make sure that that is displayed and B1 is going to take her out. That's all we have to do for that, relatively easy. Now the menu pages, menu pages, we're going to get into this in a little bit, but I want to focus before we move ahead too far, a little bit more focus on how we get these items to that. So once we're going to show you how to add items, then I'm going to show you how to add graphics. So those are the items we're going to go over right now. So when I make a selection here, and I click this plus, it's going to add that item here. If we take a look at the assign macro here, we see that it's called menu add single item. So when I click on edit, it's going to take us back into the food items and it's called add single item. We've already shown you this load category items. Now we're going to focus on menu add a single item. That's what I want to do. Certainly, I need to know the selected row. What row is selected? That's going to come from B16. If I know what selected row and I know the database located in G, I can pull up all the information. The database is seven here. So I know all of that information. So it's very important to understand the selected row. If it's empty, we can't do anything. Select rows B16. The menu ID is located in B2. That's the menu ID though for that ID. Now I need to know the food item row. Where is it found? It's found in column G in the selected row. This is the food item database row. That's very important because once I know that, I can extract the item name from column B. I can extract the description from column D, the price from column E, and the picture from column F. I can extract all that over from directly from here. Name, description, price, and picture name. So I'm going to put all that into variables. Once it's inside variables, I can then add that information to the database, determining the first rule, right? First thing we want to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to add, as soon as we add an item, I want to add all this information to the database. You can't see it. it's a little bit dark here. Yeah, let's just change that to white so you can see. So I need to add, so I've added here, let's this one too. Okay, so we have four items that we've added, an item name, we've added an item name here, We've added a price and we've added the item description. So all of that needs to be added in here. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to check the only one that's optional is the picture. We may or may not add a picture. And that's simply going to depending on whether the user said yes. If I change this to no and I go in here 
and I decide to add another item, it is only going to add the description. I didn't move it over, but it's only going to add the description and no pizza. You see there's just one food here. So let's go ahead and remove these so they're not overlapping. And we can just remove that. Okay, so that's good. I like that. Okay, so we understand that we're going to add all those items there. But I want to make sure that we are actually going to add only those items that are associated. So to do that, we can, we've extracted that. And I'm going to put it inside a database. Because as soon as I add it to the menu, I want to make sure that it gets added inside that database. I'm going to take a look at again. So let's take a look down here at the database. right? Take a look. See, we have 167. All this information is available. These rows are available. But as soon as I add, let's add that picture. Now let's change that to adding a picture. As soon as I add an item, I want to make sure that all that information gets added to the database. That means we want to make sure all the, the food description, brush with garlic, the meat eater, meat eater's pizza, the, the description, the price, and the picture all get added to the database. All these things just got added here. Notice on 167. So all this information here, these four items all got added here. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. The only one that's optional is the pizza. So continuing on, so the first thing what we want to do is I want to add the item name. So the item name to the database. And we'll move a little bit quicker because there's a lot of repetition here. We're going to determine the first menu item row. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that shape name. I want to get a very specific name. Remember, every shape name starts out on the menu with menu shape. This is the food name. We're giving it that nine characters. And then the menu item row. In column A, we're going to put the ID. We're going to put the item type called food name. Inside, we're going to put the page number. Uh, that's going to come from B6 in column C. D is going to take on the item name and V is going to take on the row. I'm not going to worry about saving its position just yet, but when they click save menu, then I'm going to worry about where it's located. That's what we're going to do. So that's for adding the item name. Now what we want to do is add that item to the, all we've done is add it to the database, but now I want to add that item name to the menu itself. This is the item name here. This is what we've added here. See, it says menu shape, food name 167. We need to actually add that. To do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this sample text box here. I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to format it accordingly. So I'm going to duplicate that text box shape and give it a very specific name, that shape name. With that, all we're going to do is going to set that horizontal alignment to the left. We're going to give it a, just a default position and we're going to give it a default width, a default height, a default top position and the text frame, the text inside that text box is going to take on the item name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set that font size based on the item font size. Now, I've given some named ranges here. This is the one we're going to call this the menu item font size. Menu item. This is the item font size. This is the named range. So notice I have named range for category font size, named range for description, and named range for price. That makes it a lot easier. I don't need to associate it with a specific cell, but I can use the named range. And so that's just what we did. So it's going to set that font size to that. And then we're going to give it a also a macro on that on acro menu shape select so we're going to basically duplicate this for every single so the item description also gets added to the database and gets added to the menu now the description of course is going to take on the text is going to be the item description we're going to add the item price same thing we're simply adding that in price to the database here the first available row and we're adding the item price to the menu using this and also adding the item picture but only if show picture that variable that's the variable that the name range excuse me that i've created right here called show pick if that value is yes only then are we going to add the picture if it does not equal yes we're simply going to exit the sub if it does equal we're going to check for the menu folder make sure we've got a menu folder I'm going to set that menu folder to the string there i'm going to create the picture path it's going to be based on that menu folder we know it's located in the folder food pictures that's where it's located in here that's where all of our food pictures are located now if you want all these resources i'll make sure to include them for our patreon members so don't forget to join patreon and you can have all these food pictures just as i have there all right so we've got that we know what folder it's going to be in that folder and we're going to add the picture name when we create that it's going to be our full picture path then what we're going to do is we're going to set that menu item row the first available we're adding all the information to the database going to give it a very specific name on the type we're going to add that picture to our menu simply by inserting a picture 
I'm giving it a very specific name, and then we're just going to give it some default sizes. I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and give it a default, and the user can move it wherever they want. So all that happens as soon as the user clicks this plus button, as you saw. And then if you want to delete it, we can, of course, delete it here. We're going to get into that as well. All right, so that's pretty much how we add an item by clicking on that plus and adding the item details. It not only adds the picture on top of our menu, but it also makes sure to add it inside our database. All right, so that is it. That's all we have to do as far as our um, food items. So let's go ahead and continue back on our items and go into the graphics. So we've, we've covered categories, we've covered items, we've covered how to add items. And now what I'd like to do is how do we add graphics to this? So let's go in and check that out. So starting back on our item types, and we're going to go into our set menu pages and set graphics. We have the graphics library, but what happens when we select on something? Well, let's take a look inside this. Let's take a macro. If I click on this and we click assign macro, we see that it's called graphics add. That is the macro that we're going to be using to add it. If we take a look, that's going to be in our designer macros modules. And inside this, how we have a graphic menu select. So if we have a, first of all, when I select on a specific graphic, we want something to happen, right? What do we want to happen? Well, I want to do a few things. I want to set our selected menu shape inside B8, whatever the menu shape, and I want to put that plus directly up on our graphics. So those are the pretty much, so those are pretty much the two things that we're going to have. So that's the macro that's been assigned to all the shapes, the same macro to all of the shapes inside our group. So with the selected shape, we're going to put that into a variable. We're going to set that as a shape, and that's going to be the shape application caller. It's going to set that shape name, but we're actually going to set it as a shape because selected shape is a shape here. We're going to set, I want to know the name of that, right? We can usually use application caller too here. That would be fine. BA is going to take on that shape name. And then with the shapes, add shape button. Now this is the that plus button. This is that plus. You see that plus? This is called add shape button. I want to place that in the upper right of the shape. So we're going to give it a left position based on the left position of that shape, based on the added the width of that shape, and then minus 10. So that's going to set it not all the way to the right, but a little bit. We're going to set the top position based on the current top position of the shape, minus 5. I want to make sure that we're taking that plus and we're going to bring it to the front, and we're going to make sure it is visible. So that's all we have to do. When we select it, that's all we're going to simply be doing. Okay, so what about when we actually click that? I want to, there's a macro that gets added to that. And again, that macro is what we're going to be going over now. It's called graphics add. So we're adding a specific graphic, but we need to know what graphic to add. How do I know that is this round rectangle graphic that got added? Well, I know because I know which one's selected, located in B8. B8 is going to tell us what type the user was at a circle, was it a rectangle, was it a rounded corner rectangle, parallelogram text or is it a line? So B8 is going to tell us that. So we certainly need to know. If B3 is empty, we want to let the user know to make sure to save the menu before any adding any shapes. Saving that menu is critical because we need to save it to the database. Setting the menu ID in B2, what we want to do is if B8 is empty, we can exit the sub, right? B8 is critical. It's going to tell us what shape the user has selected. Without that, of course, we won't be able to add any particular shape. All right, so continuing on, we want to make sure that it contains value. We're going to select H2. That's just going to give us something else to select. We're going to set that shape type, which is a string variable based on B8. So the shape type, is it a circle, square, whatever, that's going to go into the variable. Then what we're going to do is we need to add this information to the database. Just as we did with our items, we now have to add the shape details. I need to add that to the database. So if we take a look at menu item database, you see that this one, round rectangle shape, got added. It is on page one. It is on a menu one. And here's the name of the shape. So that and, of course, the row got associated. So all of that got added to the database using here the first available row. We're simply setting the shape name. It's going to be menu shape and the shape type and the menu row. So we're combining that to create a name for the shape. That's a very specific name for that shape so that we know we can work with it a little bit later on. So that's the name of the shape that got added. Okay, continuing on, we're going to, again, add the menu ID in column A, item type, page number, shape name, and row. You saw all that a few times already. Okay, now what we want to do is we need to create that shape. And we're, if the shape type is does not equal text box, text boxes are handled a little bit differently. So text boxes, all the other shapes are handled in one way, text box is a little bit different. So if it's not a text box, it's a basic shape, what we're going to do is we're simply going to copy the shape type Taking the shape, already set that shape type. So basically, if the shape type here, graphics group here, which we pulled up from here, 
circle shape or whatever it is here circle shape I want to duplicate this circle shape so I'm going to copy it in this case I'm not going to use duplicate because it's in a group it's going to stay in that group I don't want to use duplicate in this I want to copy it when I copy a shape and I paste it it pastes outside of the group if I duplicate like if I use control D now same thing as duplicate notice that it's still in the group notice my group grows right so I want to make sure I'm not duplicating it I want to copy it if I copy and paste it it pastes outside that's just what we're going to do inside VBA we're going to copy the shape we're going to paste it and then what we're going to do is we're going to assign it a specific name that selected shape it's going to take on this name that's our name else then it's a text box so these are for all the shapes circle square rectangle and so on and so forth text box can handle a little bit differently the text box we've got a sample here this is our text box. so this is the one we want to this isn't in a in a group so we can duplicate this one so we're going to duplicate that because it's not in a group so shapes text box duplicate name shape name so now both of them got either one of whatever type it was it got that specific shape name so now what we're going to do is we don't need this code here we're going to set that selected shape equal to the shape name and we're going to focus now all going to do is going to place it on our menu giving it a very default left position a default top position and now if the shape type does not equal a text box and the shape type does not equal line so for both of these if it's not a line and it's not a text I want to give it a very specific fill that does not notice the line and the text don't have fills we're going to set that default fill color just going to give it a default fill color is blue okay I also want to assign a macro to that and that means basically that a macro got assigned to this shape if we click on edit macro here we can see it's assigned macro we can see that menu shape select so it's this macro that gets assigned to the shape when we create it menu shape select and then all we're going to do is going to set b10 to the selected shape name b10 value equals that selected shape name i want to know what shape was selected b10 so we just added that in b10 so that's going to put that shape whether it's a text box or anything else it's going to create that and put that on the menu so now when i select a shape notice we just assign a macro now regardless of the type of shape whether it's a picture whether it's text whether it's a menu item whatever they all get the same macro all called menu shape select so it is this macro that we're going to go over right now called menu shape select it's a relatively simple macro all i want to do is take whatever the name of the shape the user has selected regardless of what it is and i want to put it in b10 so it's going to take on here this is where it's going to go that shape name when we make that selection it's going to go directly there okay what else do i want to do i want to select the shape so when i select it i want to select that gives the user the ability to change Right? when we select it automatically they can very much easily change it that's what we're going to do selecting so when i click on something it's automatically going to select it so we can do that with simply using this one right here called menu shapes application color select the shape the user selected then the vba will go ahead and select it we're going to now what i want to do is i want to display that delete button giving the user the ability to delete that this is the delete button called shape delete button i want to place that in the regardless of the shape i want to place that delete button in the upper right hand corner so to do that we're going to say with menu shapes shape delete the left position equals whatever the left position of the shape that called it plus the width of that shape so it's going to put it on the right side we're going to set the top position of that delete button going to go to the same as the shape we're going to make sure it's visible and we're going to bring it to the front so that is the all we need to do is just simply select it but what about when i want to delete it when i want to delete it i need to do a few things one i need to delete it let's add another shape here now let's take a look at the, both of these shapes this shape is menu shape parallel shape 168 this is 167. if i delete 167 it's going to delete the shape which we know it's going to look in the menu items database it's going to delete this row but what happens to this row and i can demonstrate that for you okay so what we're going to do is we're going to delete this shape here now this shape becomes 167 inside the database it becomes 167 so it's gone so the other shape and the row we need to make sure that we're updating the rows in the shape for anything that's after that so that's exactly what we're going to do when we delete it so inside the delete shapes delete this is the macro that's assigned to that so what we're going to do is run through that and the first thing is we've got to know we need to what make sure what is the shape that's been selected that's going to be tracked in b10 if b10 doesn't contain that shape name we cannot move forward so if it's empty we're going to exit the sub out we're going to set that shape name that shape name is going to automatically go into uh this string variable b10 going to set that selected 
we're going to delete that shape, right? We don't want it on the on our sheet anymore. We can delete it, but I also need to make sure that we delete it from the database. So to do that, we're going to extract the menu item row. We're going to use replace for that. We're going to take that shape name, and what we're going to do is we're going to remove the first 17 characters. Now, regardless of the shape, whether it's a picture, a menu item, whether it's a shape or anything, it's always going to have 17 characters and then the menu ID. 17 characters, then the menu ID. So if I remove the first 17 characters, it's going to leave us with the ID. Remove the first 17 characters, leaving the menu item, excuse me, menu item database row, not the menu ID. The menu item database row is that database row that we're going to be deleting. So we can do that in the next line of code, menu items database, take that row, and we're going to delete that entire row. Now that's great once we delete a row, but we want to make sure that we're going to be updating all the subsequent rows after that and all the shapes after that just again so if i add another shape here and this is 167 and this is 168 and i delete 167 i need to make sure we're updating it how do we know that well what we're going to do is we're going to run a loop so the first thing what we want to do is we're going to hide that delete button we no longer need that delete item we're going to loop through the remaining sheets we're going to update the database rows if they are greater than the existing row so if i know that i've just deleted 167 i'm going to look through every shape on this sheet I'm going to extract the database row. If the database row is greater, like it is in this case, 168, we're going to reduce it by one. So 168 will become 167, 169, 168, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly what we need to do. It's very quick. So for each menu shape in the shape, so for every single shape inside this particular sheet, we're going to look through it. If it contains the, the string menu shape, we know it's a menu shape. We know it's very specific to a menu. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that name and put it into a variable, string variable. Then what I want to do is I want to extract the database row from this. Here it is here. The menu item database row is going to, again, we're going to simply remove the first 17 characters, and that's going to get us our database row. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check. Now the one, the row that we deleted is called menu item row. That's the one we deleted. We're going to check, is the database row greater than the menu item row? If it is, we need to reduce this row by one. So if that is the case, then we're going to do these two things. The first thing what we are going to do is update the shape name. The name of that shape is simply going to be the left portion of the shape, whatever the left is, and the menu item database row minus database row minus one. We're simply reducing it by one. So that's we're taking the first 17 characters. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the database row minus one. We're going to that's going to change the name of the shape. But then I also need to update the database. So we're going to take that database row minus one in column D, and we're going to update it to the new menu shape name. So basically, all we need to do inside here is if this is 168, we're going to change this to 167 in column D. We're just reducing it by one, and we're going to loop through all the subsequent shapes to do that. And that's all we need to do to delete the shapes and make sure that it is connected to the database. All right, I've got a few other cool macros. It's kind of something fun to show you. If I want to send this behind or send this forward, if I can do that with send backwards, or we can bring it forward just using these. There's some macros that are tied to bring forward, and it's exactly the same thing, just something kind of fun to show. You notice the line is gone here, but if I bring it forward, and that's gonna help us a little bit. So to do that, we're gonna change the Z order. So bring forward, that's the macro that's assigned to that bring forward button. We're gonna set the selected shape based on whatever's in B10. We're gonna set the Z order of that shape. We're gonna bring it forward. That's all we need to do, bring it forward. We're going to exit the sub. If there's no shape, we're just going to exit out. And the same bit backward. In the backward, we're simply going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to set the Z order backward one. And that's going to set it basically one position backward. That's it. That's all of the macros on the designer macro module. So now what we're going to do, we've already been over shapes. Now what we want to do is I want to show you a little bit more about this menu and how we, when we save it, how do we actually save all the shapes? So let's get into the macro because I want to make sure that we know that not only are we going to save all the shapes, but we want to save their position and all the features that are associated with every shape. And so what that's going to do, that's going to be inside our menu save and load macro. So this is the one we're going to be going over, right? And within this module, the first macro is menus load list. Now this is going to load all of our menus here. So the first thing you want to do is uh, application enable events false to make things a little quicker. I want to load all of these particular menus up. So how do we know 
know that's relatively easy all we need to do is certainly clear out the existing menus now inside this b5 is our selected menu row so we want to know that we don't need to know the row we want to clear that out and then also what i want to do i've got the menu id stored in column d so if i were to tab over here we see that this is a two inside column D. That is our menu ID and it's hidden using those semicolons. So that's going to be column D. That's going to help us a little bit when we load them up. So we want to clear that out. So we're going to clear out all the way from C3. I'll just use all the way to D. I want to clear out D as well. Clearing the contents of the existing menus. Now we'll also focus on the database, the menu database. That's where all of our menus are going to be stored inside our menu database. So I'm going to bring this information over, bring in column B and the menu ID as well. Well. So to do that, I'm going to determine the last row based on column A. If it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub out. The first thing we're going to do is bring over those menu names. Those are going to go into column C from column B, and then the menu IDs are going to go in column D from column A. So that's really all we're just simply doing is bringing those over here and bringing them directly in here. We just noted that column D is hidden, right? So notice that uh, you can't see that, but it is there in column D. That is the menu ID that will help us when a user selects on it. Why is that important? Because when a user makes a selection on column C, I want to take that macro, whatever macro that we're going to run, and I want to put that menu ID directly inside of B2. That happens on selection change. So when we go into selection change, let's go ahead before we go over this, let's finish with this. So what we also want to do is determine the selected row. I also want to load again. If I reload this list, let's take a look when I reload. Why would we reload this list? If I make a change to Harry's burger and I want to change that and I save that, I want to make sure that it updates on the menu. So on save, I want to then update that. So I also want to know what is the selected row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside this range and I'm I'm going to look for whatever is located in h2 if it's found i want that row to be inside of b5 how do we do that what we do with this line of code here b5 is going to take on whatever is found i'm looking in row column c3 all the way down what am i looking for i'm looking for the name which is in h2 what do i want to return i want to return the row if it's not found it will create an error therefore i've wrapped it in on air resume next and on error go to zero so that's how we automatically select the row even after we refresh the list and we're going to turn on application enable events true okay again so what i was telling you when i make a selection change on c i want something to happen those selection changes are going to focus on menu Focusing on the menu, right? When I make a selection change on one of the menu, I want to make sure that there is a value in column C and it's not empty. If there is, then what do I want to do? I want to take whatever's in D, what's in column D. Remember, that is our menu ID. It's hidden there, but I want to place that inside B2. I also want to know the row that the user selected that's going to trigger our conditional formatting. That's going to go in B. So we don't need to save that. It's unnecessary. And then what I want to do is I want to run a macro to load the menu. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get in the macros to save and load the menus. That's here. So we've already gone over to the load list. Quickly, we'll do add new add new is relatively easy i want to clear all of the shapes when i create a brand new i want to clear all the shapes that are associated how do we know what shapes because they're all contain the word string menu shape in the dash so i'm going to loop through all the menu shapes inside the sheet any ones that contain menu shape i'm going to delete those i'm going to clear out a host of cells b2 b5 and all the cells that are associated with that particular menu i'm going to clear that out and also we want to reset the total pages in b7 to one and i want to reset the picture library to one so that's for new what about when i save it if i load up an existing menu and i make a change and i save it we got to do a bunch of things one i want to make sure to save the name i want to put the last update so the first few things what we want to do is we want to determine is it a new menu or not how do we know if it's a new menu if there's no row associated with this when i click on new menu there's no row in b3 so that's going to tell us whether it's a new menu or an existing menu b3 is going to let us know that so here we have inside save menu first thing we're going to do is determine is it empty well actually i want to make sure that the user has added a menu name if they haven't let the user know that the menu name is required so that's this right here if now we're going to determine if b3 is empty if b3 is empty it is a new menu if it is not empty it is an existing menu so what are we going to do for a new menu for a new menu 
we are going to determine the row on the first available row inside our menu database. We are going to set the next menu ID. That next menu ID located in B4 using the max formula, it's gonna take directly inside B2. And we're also going to put that inside the first column in column A, you're gonna place that in the first available row. So B2 is gonna take on that. And then column A is going to take on our next menu ID. Okay, so next up, what if it's an existing? All we need to do is extract the menu row from B3. Everything else is regardless of whether it's a new or an existing. So again, I want to set that menu name. That's going to go into column B here. You see column B. I want to set the total pages in column C. That's going to come from whatever's in B7. And I want to set in column D the current date and time so I know when it's been updated. And that's just going to use the now feature to let us know that. Okay, and then I also want to set the updated on. So in the menu designer here, our last update way over here located in K2, I want to put the current date and time. That's going to be our last update. So we know when this menu is updated. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run a macro called menu page save. I'm going to get that in just a second. Then what we're going to do is menus load list. We know that. So every time we basically save it, we want to update that. And that's why we did it, right? If I change this back to Harry's Burger, as soon as I save it, I want to make sure that we are all reloading that list up. So that's what we do, reload that list up. So to make sure that that new name gets updated inside our menu name. So that's why it's important to run this and then let the user know menu saved. Okay, menu page saved. This is the macro that we're going to go over now. We're going to skip load for a second and we're going to go to menu page save. This is the macro that's going to save all the information on this menu page, it's going to save it to our database right here. So that's what we're going to go over right now. Let's take a quick look inside this macro. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that it, the menu has been saved. We cannot save all that information if we don't have a save. We need to make sure that there's a menu ID here, making sure that the user has saved it, although it should always be saved. But if not, make sure, let the user know to save the menu first. I'm going to turn off application screen updating to false. I'm going to turn off calculations to manual. It's going to make things a lot quicker. So what now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on all the shapes inside the sheet. But of course, only those shapes that contain the string menu shape in the dash. These are the menu items. These are the ones we want to focus and save them. The first thing what I want to do is I want to extract the row. We've already got a database row associated where as soon as they get added, whether it's a shape, whether it's an item, whether it's a graphic, it gets added to the menu automatically. And then it gets that database row, right? It gets that database row. That's that, that last few numbers. So we need to extract that again, removing the first 17 characters and replacing them with nothing is going to give us that menu item row. If we know the database row, we can move on. I also want to know what the shape type is. Certain shapes have certain features. If it's a picture, right, we're not going to have any text or background color associated to that. So I want to know that. We want to know based on shape. So where's that type located? The type of that is located right here in column B. I want to know what type it is. Once I have the type, then what we're going to extract that shape type is simply B in the menu item row. That's our shape type. Okay, now we're going to focus on with this specific shape. The shape here we've already set. We're focusing on that shape. What I want to do is work with it. So how do we do that? So as we do, we need to save all the information. I'm going to save the left position in column E. So the low, focusing on this particular shape, the left position is going to go into column E, the top position. Now, just not the left position of the shape. Why don't I just say the left position? Because we don't know. We don't. I don't want to save the left position of a shape all the way from the edge because we don't know. I want to save the left position from whatever the starting column is. I'm going to use column J. So I want to take the left position of column J and then I want to subtract so that I know the distance between this shape and column, the first part of column J. So when I add it back, I'm simply going to take the left position of column J and I'm going to add it to that. So I want to know what this particular shape, what is the left position? What is the difference to that? And when it comes to top position, I also want to know the top position, in this case, row four, right? I want to know row four, what is the top position? So we're going to use that. So it's the left position minus the left position of column J or it's the top position minus the row of four, row four. So that's gonna get us the difference. When we wanna add the shape back, all we need to do is just take the top position of J4 and add whatever the value is in here. I wanna know the height of the shape, that's gonna go in column G. I wanna know the width of this shape, that's gonna go in column H. The line width, what is the border width of the shape? All the border width, you have that pictures, whatever. The line for color, what is the color of the border? 
And what is the fill color? We're going to put that in column K. I want to know the transparency of the shape. And I'm going to put that in column S. And then I want to know the Z order position. This is really cool. The Z order position is the position. Each one gets a number, right? The lower the numbers, the lower the version, the higher the numbers, the most on top, right? So anything on the very top is going to have a high number, and on the very bottom is going to have a low number. So if you move it to the back, it's going to this can put position at one. So if we take a look inside our menu database, you see all the way inside our Z order column U, they have all these numbers associated with that, and you see the lower the number, the farther back it is. So it's a great way to keep track of we know what's on top and what's on the bottom. All right, so continuing, moving on. So that's why we put in the Z order. So now what we want to do is I want to focus only, so for text box, on text box, we only do a few things. Text boxes get text, they get font size, they get font type. The pictures don't. So this is for everything. However, I want to exclude food pictures or menu pictures or line shapes, right? So these particular types of shapes, lines, pictures, lines or pictures, food picture or menu picture, don't get the following. So if it's any one of those, we're simply going to go to the next item. However, if it is anything else, we are going to update the text, right? So the text of the shape, whatever the shape of the text, is going to go in column D. That means if this says burgers and it's column 33, we know, excuse me, row 33, we know in row 33 here, inside column D, it's going to contain burgers, burgers. So I want that text. And it's a different shape. 32 is going to take on Harry's notice. They're different fonts. So they're different shapes. So it's going to take on the text. That's where we're going to put the text. So I want that text to update in column D. I want the font size to go into column L. I want the font name to go into column M. Whether it's bold or not, N, italics, O, uh, underline P. So all these, all these features are going to go into there. All these characteristics of that horizontal alignment in Q and of the text color using the font fill color RGB is going to go into R and the vertical anchor. Now vertical anchor means how high is it, right? So if I've got this here at the top, I want to know where that vertical anchor is. Notice at the top, right? I want to save that vertical, how far up or how far down it is. That's also important. So I need to know that vertical anchor. All right, let's change it back to where it was, right in the middle here. So that's going to give us a, a really good ability to change that and save it exactly as we have it in the past. So the idea is, so whatever the user has to make change, when we recall it, we want to make sure that every change has been saved and we can do that. That's why we have that large database with all those columns. Okay, so that's all we're going to do. We're just simply going to loop through that. We're going to turn on application screen updating true, calculation automatic. And what that's going to do is it's going to save every change in the database, right? So again, very, very simple. If I want to change this to Harry's without the apostrophe, and I want to make that update, and I just save that menu. If we look in, I think it was row 32, and go into the menu item database, the menu's been saved, our prompt, and we go into the database, we see it's now Harry's without the apostrophe. So it's automatically saved, along with everything else, including the font, if I want to make it font or bolder, or maybe I want to make this part bold and this part, you know, so everything gets saved here automatically, so it's already bold. So we, we understand that. Now what we want to do is, I want to load it. This is the one that I skipped, menu load. So what about when we load it? I want to be able to load the menu. When I select here, I want to load the menu and load this first page of the menu. So how are we going to do that? Remember when we made that selection change inside menu, menu load is the one we want to cover, menu load. So to do that, we're going to do this. We focus on the menu here. And then what we want to do is we certainly want to make sure that B3 contains a row. We need to know the row that's associated with that menu. Without that, we can't load it. The menu ID is going to be located in B2. I want to clear any existing menu shapes, clearing everything. And not only the menu shapes, I want to clear the thumbnail pages and the library pictures. So we're going to loop through all of the shapes inside the sheet, clearing out all the menu shapes, all the pages, and all the deleting all of them. Of course, I want to clear a bunch of cells doing that, clearing all the cells. I'm going to set that menu row to lo what's located in B3, that menu row. I need to know the menu row. And all we're going to do is to simply take the database. We're going to put this, the menu name, and H2 is going to take on the name, B7 is going to take on the pages, K2 is simply going to take it. So that's all. Just three items from our menu, relatively easy. Now we're going to load the page. Now this is the opposite of what we just went over, right? We saved the page, saving all those details of the page. Now I want to load them back into the page. We're going to get over that in just a second. I just want to go over this here. I want to set the default B1 to the library picks. Oh, what I want to know is here. If when we load a page, if I've got the pages here, if I decide I'm going to select Harry's Burgers and I know that this is pages, then I want to load the thumbnails. 
So that means we're going to load, run the macro to load these pages if we know it's pages. But what about if it's pictures? If it's pictures and I select on something, I want to load the pictures that are associated with this particular one. So there's only one. So basically, that's all we're going to do is run the macro based on whatever's located in B1. So here, if B1 equals library pick, we're going to run the macro to load those library pick. If B1 equals pages, we're going to run the macro to load the pages. Okay, so now we're going to go back down to here, menu, page load. This is the one. Remember, we just went over here loading that menu, loading it right here. And now inside this macro here, this is the one I want to focus on here. Inside this macro is called menu page load. So that's the one I want to focus on with you. And that's right inside here, menu page load. So first thing we want to do is we need to correct page load, right? We don't know what page to load if we don't have a page number. So six is going to tell us the page number. As we navigate through different pages, we need to make sure that we run the macro we need to know that B6, we need to know the page number in order to load. So to do that, B6 is important. If it's empty, then we can't move on. So what I want to do is, again, clear any existing menu shapes, basically removing all the menu shapes there. We've been over this a few times. We're going to focus on that menu database. I need to know the last row. What I want to do is I want to run an advanced filter on all the items in this. I want to know all the menu items that are associated with that menu ID. And I also want to know only those associated with a specific page. I'm going to set those into a criteria. So if I've got a criteria only page 2, menu item 1. If we take a look at our menu, we see that page 2, select the page as page two, and we see that our menu item is one. So what I want to do is I want to run a filter to only determine what those shape and list those particular shapes out. So this is simply linked to the menu designer B6, our page number. This is linked to our menu designer B2. So this is going to display the menu ID in the page. I'm going to run an advanced filter. And what I want to do is I want to return information about it. I want to know the picture name. I want to, the results. I want to know the name. I do need all the information, but most importantly is the row that's associated. I want to know the item type, what type of it, because I want to skip certain item types. If it's a library pick, we don't need it. And I want to know the Z order, but I also want to sort it based on the Z order. The newest first, because as I place these pictures or whatever they're on, I want to make sure that it's based on the Z order. So that means the ones with the highest Z order get placed last, therefore they're on top. That's exactly what we're going to do in this one. We're going to determine the last row of our menu items database, and we're going to run our advanced filter from A3 all the way to V, the last column. Our criteria is just going to be what I described, X2 through Y3 here. Our results are going to come right up here, AC2 through AF2. Then we're going to determine the last results based on AD. What is our last results row? Our last results in this case is 27. We need to get that last results row. If it's less than three, that means we don't have anything else on that page, so we can exit. We're going to turn off application screen updating, enable events, and calculation. Going to make it a little bit faster by turning off all three of those. We'll turn them on before the macro finishes. Then what I want to do is I want to sort based on the Z order, ascending lowest to highest. I want to sort all those. That way, when we place all these pictures, and all these graphics, they get placed in the correct order. So that's a nice way of doing it. So to do that, uh, what I want to do is I want to run a sort. I'm going to clear all the sort fields, and I'm going to add a key. That key is going to be based on AF3. And the reason is because that's where our first Z order is. And we want ascending, lowest to highest. I'm going to have our entire range, AC3 through AF in the last results row. That's going to sort all those. Then we're going to apply. So that's going to basically sort based on the Z order. Very important. I'm going to check the menu folder, run the macro to make sure. Then we're going to run a loop from three all the way. And basically inside this loop, what I want to do is I want to get the name, I want to get the type, and I want to know the row. That row is very important. This is the row that it's here on the database. Once I know this row, I can know all the information concerning the shapes. So very important that we know that row. And we can run a loop for three to the last results row. That menu item row is very critical. That's located in column D. I need to extract that row and put it into a variable. That variable is called menu item row. I also want to know what shape type. Shape type is very important because we need to know uh, information about that. We know if it's a picture, we're not adding text or a background color. So that's important. And that's going to be coming from AE. So AE. If the shape type is library pick or the shape type is page picture, either one of those, we can go to the next item. We're not loading those inside the, those type of pictures. Library pictures and page pictures don't get on that. So we can do that. Now I, what I want to know is the shape name. What is the name of the shape? The name of the shape is going to always start out with menu shape. 
Then it's going to be combined with the shape type, then the row. So that's going to get us our full shape name. I'm going to put it here. That's very important. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to create a shape based on that. So what do I mean by that? Well, if the shape type is any one of these types, we're going to duplicate it. If the shape type is a picture, we're going to create it from file. If it's a text, we're going to duplicate that. So we're going to use select case to do that. If the case type is a menu picture, we're going to set the picture path based on the menu folder, the menu pictures, and whatever's located in D and the value, right? D is the name of that picture. D, remember pizza back PNG, whatever it is, that's gonna, so that's gonna create that full file path for the picture. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert that inside the sheet using menu pictures insert. And it's gonna give it a very specific name, that shape name. All the shapes are gonna take on the same, this name. Then what I want to do is I wanna lock the aspect ratio of that picture. What if it's a food picture? Almost the same, the only difference in this is a different folder, food picture folder, so that's the only difference. Everything else is the same for this. What if it's a text box? Well, if it's text box or food name or food description or a food pick price, if it's any one of those, it's basically text. We're going to be duplicating that sample text box. If it's any of those, we're duplicating it and giving it that specific name. What if it's any of those shapes, a circle shape, a rectangle shape, line shape, round or parallel shape? In that case, again, we're going to use the copy and paste method. We're not duplicating. We're copying it from the existing shapes. We're going to paste it. If the active sheet equals menu, then we're gonna activate it. We wanna make sure we're activating the menu. And the selection, we're giving it a very specific name. That's gonna set that name of the shape. Okay, then continue on. Then set the menu shape equal to the menu shape's name. So here we're putting it into a shape variable so that we can work with it. So it's gonna be based on the menu shape shape name. Then we're gonna focus on it. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure it's visible equals true. The reason it might not be visible is because these types of shapes are, usually, are often hidden only if it's made, so we wanna make sure it's visible. So that's gonna be important. I wanna set a macro to it called on action menu shape select. We've been over that macro. I'm gonna set the left position of that. It can be based on whatever's in column E. Remember, E is our left position plus J1. Remember I said we're gonna subtract it from J1. Now we're adding it to J1. We were subtracting it from the top position. Now we're adding it back to the top position of row four. That's what I explained, there's setting the height setting the width and then also if there is a border width or border color we want to check if there's no border it wouldn't matter right? but if there is a border width then i want to set the line weight to whatever the value is if there or then a color i want to set the border color that line for color rgb to whatever is located in column j okay if the shape type does not equal the line shape or food picture remember if it's not a picture or a shape I want to set the fill color and fill transparency. So these are gonna, pictures and lines don't have fills or fill color or transparency, but all the other shapes do. And the pictures also have that too. So, excuse me, the, all the shapes have that and the text boxes have that too, not the pictures. Text boxes and all of the shapes have the fill color and the fill transparency. All right, so continuing on, we're gonna on the text base field. So only on those text base, if it's a picture, or if it's a line, we are gonna to go to the next line. For those, we're gonna update the text based on the text range, whatever in column D. We're gonna update the font size, the font type, bold, italicized. So we're simply updating this brand new shape that we're creating, setting all the information, the horizontal alignment, the color, and the vertical alignment. So that's basically all we're doing is just simply assigning and creating that shape exactly the way we saved it, the way it was before. We're gonna loop through that. And that's simply going to load the page. That's all, turning on application screen updating, enabling events, and automatic calculations. Cool, so that's it for the menu. That's how we load this page. It is this same macro that's tied. All we have to do for the page navigation. I wanna show you this page navigation. These are very, very small macros and show you how we did that. So that's going to be right in here. This previous page, next page, these two are tied to this previous page here. And all we're reducing it is simply reducing the page located in B6. And if we get to one and we try to do it again, we're gonna let the user know you're on the first page already. So for previous page, if B6 equals one, you're on the first page already. Otherwise, reduce B6 by one and then save any changes that the user has made. And then we're simply gonna run the macro called menu page load that's the same macro we just went over next page almost the same for the last we know that the last page total numbers it here in b7 and so if we get to the last one and the user tries to navigate beyond that 
we're going to let them know with a little message saying you were on the last page. So that's all we're going to do here on the last page. If the last B6 equals already the last page, we're going to increment B6 to one, increasing that page and then loading that menu. I guess we could save it too. Probably should do that too. Saving that as well. Probably a good idea. That way, if the user has made any changes and they've forgotten, they can do that as well. Okay, great. What about if I want to add a page? Well, if you add a page, it's very, very simple. And that's what we're going to do right here. Menu add page. That is the macro that's tied to this add page button. So what do we want to do? Well, first of all, I want to make sure that we have saved it. We must have a row. I want to make sure that we've saved it. If I want to add a brand new page, all I need to do is just clear out all the shapes and then increase the total menu pages, increase that by one, and then select the page, move that up by one too. So that's exactly what we're going to do. B6 equals B6 plus one, B7 equals B7 plus one, and we're gonna load the page. Now loading this page automatically clears out the macro. So when I click here, it automatically clears everything out. How did that happen? Because the first part of that loading page clears everything out. Remember, this part here clears all the shapes out. And all it basically did is it ran an advanced filter. It didn't find any shapes for page four at all, so therefore it returned blank. So that's all we have to do. Now, if we go to the previous, we see that page three does have values. That's all we have to do for the navigation. So we've done here adding the page, and we're gonna do select thumbnail now, previous page and next page. So the last one that we have for this particular module is called select thumbnail. Now, when I make a selection on a thumbnail here, I also want, notice we have a blank page here, which is cool. Now, when I make a selection on a thumbnail, I also want to make sure that that thumbnail loads. And so, of course, I've assigned a macro to these. When these get created, they get assigned a macro. So that macro is that menu select thumb, and that's the one. So basically, on this one, all we need to do is extract the menu ID from B2. I need to know the page number. Now that page number, I'm gonna go over in just a moment, but basically, if we take a look inside here, we see the page number. If I remove menu and then one and then underscore page, I want this page, I want this one, or I want this two, or I want this three. I don't wanna put that directly inside B6. So when I select on page three, I want that to go directly to that blank page there. So how do we do that? All right, let's go ahead and save that. I wanna generate the thumbnail for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save that and that's gonna generate that blank thumbnail. That's what I wanted there. Okay, so here we go. So the menu ID, so I wanna extract that this number here, three, so when I place that in there, so how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to use the replace an application caller. And then what I want to do is take menu plus the menu ID plus underscore page. All of this, I'm going to replace it with nothing. What that's going to do is going to leave that page number. I'm going to take that page number. I'm going to place it in B6. Then I'm going to run the macro to load the page. That's it. Okay, cool. Last up, how do we really create these very, very cool automated thumbnails here. So how do we create that, right? So that means if I add a shape to this or add a picture to this, how do we create that? So I'm gonna go ahead and add that picture there. I'm going to save that. And if we look inside pages here, it's been saved. We see that our thumbnails automatically been updated. So how do we do that? Well, that's really cool. I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna get into that right now. Let's go ahead and go back into our final item for item types. And remember, we went menu graphics. Now we're gonna focus on menu pages. Menu pages, this is the macro. That means when I click on this pages, it's gonna load up those menu pages. So how do we do that? Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is run the macro to hide everything in the menu. I wanna make sure that we have a menu folder. And then what we want to do is with the menu, what we're going to be doing is we're going to give it that page title. Remember, this one has a particular title called page title. I want to put that and make sure that's visible. Next up, I want to set the menu type to B1. That's going to be pages. And I want to know that menu ID inside a variable. I also want to know the last page. I want to know how many pages are we going to loop through. Last page is located in B7, so I need to know that. And also what I want to do is I want to know the menu folder. That menu folder is where everything is going to be located inside our resources. And I'll, after this, I'm going to show you how to create, of course. It's going to be located in our page thumbs. This is where it's located right here inside our page thumbs folder. So our menu folder is going to be our main. If the directory page thumbs, I want to create that folder if it doesn't exist. So we're going to check it. If the menu folder along with the page thumbs VB directory is empty, then we're going to make create that folder. It's going to create that folder. All right, we're going to set the top position initially to that first top position all the way up here, column four, row four plus a little bit, five actually, row five plus a little bit, set that initial top for that first picture. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the pictures. 
and then we're going to do for the page number equals one to the last page i'm going to set the thumbnail now i'm going to show you how to extract these and then we're going to show you how to save these so i'm going to show you how to extract these pictures but i only want for menu one menu one one so only for the menu so if there's four pages i want to find all only the ones for that specific menu so to do that we're going to set the thumbnail now that thumb name is going to be similar to menu and the menu id underscore page and the page number so this sets our default now we're going to set the path that path is going to be based on the menu folder and the page page thumbs and the thumb name and jpg so this is the particular full file path for that thumbnail we're going to check to make sure it's accurate if it's not we're going to go to the next page if it is accurate we're going to insert that thumbnail path that picture and we're going to give it that very specific thumbnail name setting that picture name i also want to insert it we're going to lock the aspect ratio we're going to give it a very specific width we're going to give it that top position i want to give it that left that left is going to be based on e and i want to basically center it in column e so i'm going to take excuse me center it between column e and f so i want the total width of column e and f i want to subtract out the width of the picture which in this case is 60 and then i want to divide that by two and so to do that we're going to take the left position of e1 we're going to add to that the total width of columns e and f and then we're going to subtract the width of the picture in this case it's always 60 and we're going to divide that by two that's going to center the picture horizontally between columns e and f there i'm going to set that uh, macro remember there's a macro called menu select thumb we just went over that macro so i want that macro tied to that picture we're going to set the top position equal to the top position plus the height of the picture plus 15 and that way each one has a, they're separated nicely on the top that is all we do we're simply going to loop through all the pages well that's how we display them but how do we actually create that well it actually starts out on the sheet itself so what we want to do is we want to create using the camera tool create a shape that's similar to the picture that we have here in the menu so we're going to use the camera tool to do that now let's take a look inside here now we see that our menu covers from j4 all the way to j50 so j4 so it's in just that single column all the way from rows 4 to 50. so what we want to do is create a camera tool so we're going to click on the camera tool if you don't have that tool up here you can also find it inside here in the more command so once we have the camera tool, we select anything we want right and so now what we want to do is we want to change this to j4 j here and then four okay and then all the way to 50 to j50 so all the way to j50 so j and then 50. okay great so what that's going to do is link up automatically and create that so now it's going to create a duplicate and you see now we have that picture now if we move it off to the side a little bit i've given it a name so let's shrink this down a little bit we can see it and just move it over here and you see i've got it now you see i've got one here already here but it's just not updated so this is automatically updated so if i click however one of the issues with the camera tool is it tends to be a little bit slow so now this, look how slow this is it's a little bit slower to update so what i want to do so that means when this area changes so does this camera tool now it's only a little bit slow because of the link so if i were to take away this link temporarily we can still show the pizza and it's much much faster right although it's not going to update which is fine so notice it didn't update but when we add the link back in it would update so what I want to do and I did it just here create another shape so now we have two shapes so I'm going to delete the shape so I use the camera tool to create this shape now there's no link here but what if we add the link inside in VBA right so as soon as we link it so let's just take a look at uh, let's put that link in here now so all we need to do is just click on here add an equals again that same one J here and then four then through again once again j through 50. okay so we link that and automatically as soon as we link it it's going to automatically so we can see how adding the link is automatically going to do that and removing the link means it won't change but it won't update okay so we understand that okay so now that we understand that let's go into the vba and take a look first thing what we want to do is we want to make sure of course that our menu has been saved if it has not we are going to go let the user know we're going to check for the menu folder we're going to extract the menu id and the I want the thumb name just as we did before we extracted it we're going to now create that into a string it's going to be the menu the menu id underscore the page and the page number jbg so this is the name of the thumbnail then of course we have the menu folder now again we're going to check once that's just like we did before we're going to see does it exist right does that folder exist using this here if it doesn't we're going to make it just like we did before we're going to set the entire pathway thumb path to the menu folder 
plus the page underscore thumbs and the thumb name. Make sure that thumb name includes the JPG. Now we have the path, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to create a picture. So first of all, if the directory path, if it's existing, we want to delete it, right? So every time we recreate it, I want to replace it, right? Maybe we make a change here, and I want to make sure that the picture inside the file gets replaced with a newer copy. So we're going to check if it exists, we're going to kill it, delete the picture if it exists. Now we have this shape here. It's called page thumb. All I need to do is then assign that formula to it. Remember, I'm not doing that automatically. I'm not doing that always because simply it, it slows up the application considerably when we use the picture tool. So we have to be careful when you use it. Now the shape in itself will not, will not slow down the application. This, this shape will not create any slow. However, it is the link that does create the slowness. So we only need to apply that link when we need it, then we can remove it, right? It kind of makes sense, right? Only when we need it. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside VBA. So here, shapes page thumb drawing object formula. This command here adds that formula just as we did before manually. Now it's doing it through VBA. We're setting the picture tool. Then we're going to run the calculate. Then we're going to turn on up application screen updating true. And the reason we're doing this is we want to make sure that the picture updates automatically. Then what we need to do is we actually need to save that picture. Now, if we have a picture, we can't simply, Excel doesn't allow us, I wish it, I wish it does, simply to take a shape and save it as a picture. Maybe one day it will, but for now it doesn't. So the only way we can save this picture is to place it in a chart and then convert that chart background to a JPEG. And that's just what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the object chart. Now this has automatically been set as an object. It's going to simply equal the chart object. Here we're creating a chart. We're going to add a chart. We're going to make it 200 by 200. We're going to make the width and the height. What is the width? This is the location, right? The location doesn't necessarily matter in this case. So, but the width should be the same width as our thumbnail, as our page thumb, and the height should be the same height. So we're here, we're creating a chart that the chart is going to be the same size. That chart is going to be the same exact size as this thing right here. So once we have both the same size, we have the, the shape and the chart the same size, we're going to then copy this. We're going to take this page and we're simply going to copy it and we're going to paste it inside the chart. The first way to do that is the object chart activate. So we're going to activate it and we're going to paste this picture directly in that chart that automatically gets created. So now we have it inside the chart. And the reason we do this is because we can save that chart as a particular picture. And to do that, we're going to check again, we're going to check delete the file. We already checked for this, so we don't need two of those. Okay, we already deleted it. Okay, so here's where here's the part where we take the chart and we create a picture from it. Active chart, we're going to export it. We're going to export it based on that thumb file path. And we're giving it the filter name as JPEG. So here is where we create the picture based on the path. Then we no longer need the chart. We're going to delete the chart. So now we've created a chart. We've saved it inside here. We've put it in there. So now we've created this little JPEG here inside the folder. And now what we need to do is we need to update the thumbnails if possible. So what I want to do, if B1 equals pages. So that means that when I make a change here, okay, for example, if I want to take this particular one and I want to take this little green shape and I want to move it over here to the side, as soon as I save it, I want to make sure that that thumbnail updates. So when I save it, only if the pages are visible. So now you see in our thumbnail, it's automatically saved over. The menu has been saved. And so what we do is if, only if, then what we're going to do is we're going to update all the picture shapes for each picture shape in shapes. If the picture name equals picture shape name, page contains pages greater than zero, then we're deleting. Basically, we're going to refresh all the pictures. So we're deleting all the thumbnails. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run the macro that updates the one I just went over, the menu pages. So it's going to update it. It's going to delete them all and it's going to update all of them based on that. And that's all we need. That way they all get updated exactly. So very, very cool. That's how we create these incredible thumbnails and we can use them for any type of a purpose. Again, you may want to use them for creating proposals or creating invoices. Maybe you want to create multiple page invoices, a great way to do that. So this particular restaurant menu designer has a lot of potential potential purposes is really flexible. So I can't wait to see what you are going to do with it. In this training, we learned a lot. We created this really cool multi-part menu where we could create and add additional pictures. We added items, pictures from their database and showed how we can then save all those menus to the particular database and how we could save those locations and create multi-pages in a single location. 
We're able to add any type of graphics. We're able to create really cool thumbnails and pages and select them and display that, creating this navigation, saving printing. Now, we also have print and delete. Kind of ran out of time, but I'll make sure to include those inside the Patreon. So make sure you sign up for Patreon. I'll be adding print and both delete features to that particular training as well as anything else you might suggest so go ahead and get on our patreon i'll include the links down below thanks so much i appreciate all your patience in these long trainings and we'll see you next time thanks again